Does your rug need a doctor? Do you dread having your carpets cleaned and wait till you can't stand it anymore? The sad fact is, all carpets should be cleaned at least once a year. In low traffic areas, carpets can go 12 to 18 months between cleanings, but high traffic areas may need to be cleaned on a quarterly basis. So in this video, we'll show you 5 things you need to know before buying or renting a carpet cleaning machine. We'll discuss the number one problem with carpet cleaning machines, give you professional carpet cleaning advice when using them, discuss proper carpet drying, cover how to deal with urine, and review the steps necessary to have a successful do-it-yourself experience. Number one, the number one problem with carpet cleaning machines. The number one problem with the do-it-yourself carpet cleaning machines today is the improper instructions given to the customer. It doesn't matter if you bought the upright model with onboard heating or just rented one from a kiosk. In trying to save a buck, the manufacturers have you add the soap to their dispenser tanks. This practice is wrong. If you watch a professional carpet cleaner, we have a separate pre-sprayer for the diluted soapy solution. Depending on the size of the area you need to clean, you could use a garden pump sprayer or a spray bottle to dispense your solution. You can even reuse them at a later date. I will explain why adding soap to the machine is wrong and why the soap should be separate in a minute. Number two, professional carpet cleaning advice. Carpet cleaning is not rocket science, but it is chemistry. When you wash your hands, do you put your antibacterial soap in a spray bottle, dilute it with water, spray your hands and then wipe them on your towel? No? Why not? You would still have soap on your hands, right? Since soap attracts dirt, if you put the soap in the tank of your machine, you will be spraying hot soapy water onto your carpet and removing only a portion of it. Since soap attracts dirt, your carpet will look twice as bad a few weeks from the time you use the machine, and with repeated use, your carpet will become dirtier. The professional way to clean your carpet is to vacuum the carpet to remove as much dirt as possible. Using a separate spray bottle, you pre-spray the carpet with a diluted carpet cleaning solution. Let the solution dwell for 10 to 15 minutes, then extract the solution with nothing more than clean hot water, like washing your hands properly. You lather first, and then rinse with clean water. This will remove far more residue and produce far superior results than following the manufacturer's instructions. Number three, the proper way to dry your carpet. The store bought and store rented carpet cleaning machines generally tend to have low suction for water extraction. Add to that the repeated use and abuse of their machines, the improper instructions intended to make you a repeat customer, and you could be leaving a lot of soapy water in your carpet. When you start cleaning, make a wet pass extracting with hot water only. Remember, you pre-sprayed soap on the carpet and now are removing it with clean water. You then make a dry pass using no water, just suction. You want to remove as much water from the carpet as possible. If present, turn on ceiling fans or room fans and let them blow across the carpet for a few hours, moving them as needed. Moisture will wick its way from the carpet matting to the surface and evaporate into the air. If you have air conditioning, turn it down to 72 degrees. Besides removing heat from a confined space, it also removes moisture. I never recommend opening windows, no matter what the temperature is outside. Humidity is always present and is a good way to get mold spores or mildew in your carpets. Number four, what about urine? Urine is one of the most annoying problems to deal with. The longer the urine is on or in your carpet, the more serious the damage. Unfortunately, small rental units or store-bought units lack the proper amount of suction for deep extraction of urine. Most professionals use a, a pad or claw they can stand on and get deep extraction down to the padding. It costs a lot more and there's no guarantee it will solve the problem. If an animal repeatedly uses the same spot, it will be more costly to remove the urine. A cheaper solution for eliminating urine is a product called Urine Gone with enzymes. And Walmart has it for $9.98. I never recommend buying deodorizers or odor neutralizers for urine. It only masks the smell, and it doesn't do away with it. 
once the deodorizer wears off, the smell will return. Depending on the extent of the damage, the only way to be rid of urine is to replace the carpeting, padding, or use something with enzymes that eats the salt crystals. <laughs> yes, it works on all urine. Number 5. Steps to have a successful experience. Number 1. No matter what the back of the bottle or the machine directions state, do not put soap in the machine. Number 2. Use hot water in the machine and diluted carpet shampoo in either a spray bottle for small jobs or a garden sprayer for larger jobs. Number three, when you start cleaning, make a wet pass using only hot water in the machine. This will be extracting the solution you pre-sprayed. Number four, empty the tank into your toilet and make a dry pass using no water in order to remove as much water from the carpet as possible. Number five, use a ceiling fan, air conditioning, or a room fan to aid in drying time. Last but not least, never open windows till the carpet is dry. Well armed with the knowledge of the five basic things you need to know before buying or renting a carpet cleaning machine, you should be able to get satisfactory results in your do-it-yourself endeavor. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs>